let's do this. Let's vote on our game awards nominees. Now, I will lead this off by just saying this whole thing is kind of silly. It's kind of stupid. There's a couple of like snuffs that I just don't, <laughs> I don't understand them. Therefore, they are uh, stupid. But <laughs> so let me just preface this by this is just, you know, based on my opinions, of course. But I, like, for example, I think that the fact that that um, Hogwarts Legacy did not get a nomination for anything at all is laughable. Like, I find that to be such an obvious case of them trying to avoid controversy with none of the 120 journalists or whatever voting for it to be nominated for even music or art direction you know it, it's insane it is literally the biggest game of the year by sales like literally the biggest game of the year and they just are pretending like it it doesn't exist it's really really weird to me um so there's things like that there was also the big oopsie where it looks like they nominated dave the diver for an like best indie game but by almost every definition of indie game it's not an indie game so <laughs> that was funny <laughs> but you know what we're going to we're gonna we're gonna do this we're gonna vote now and i will offer my thoughts and then you guys can mock me roundly for how i vote game of the year nominations are pretty straightforward nothing that shocking personally i've been through this before but personally i'm not comfortable giving remakes uh, game of the year just because I feel like most of the work that made the game incredible was done years ago by the original team so it seems weird to nominate it alongside games where all of the work was done for this release you know it, like not that they didn't do a good job with Resident Evil 4 Remake they did but like the groundwork was laid many years ago by by uh, another group of people so for me personally it just doesn't, it doesn't hit like that. And no shocker to anybody. I mean, what I would replace this with, I think honestly, I know it's a meme at this point. I do think Diablo 4 does deserve a nomination. It was a massively impressive game when it launched. They just kind of have stumbled out of the gate and struggled to keep it up. But that game, I mean, when it launched, uh, again, everybody was, was hyping it up. Everybody loved it. Mario Wonder, I mean, whenever Mario releases anything, it seems like it's always nominated. So Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, I, I think Final Fantasy 16 is really good. It could replace Resi 4 from what I've seen. Um, honestly, like I would probably throw out a nomination to Lies of P. I would toss them something because that was such a cool game that lived up to the hype in so many ways. So I'd probably toss them a nomination. But, you know, all of these, it's just a really packed year. It's a great problem to have. All of these, if they want it, I wouldn't be um, upset or anything. Like, I think they all, there's arguments to be made that any one of these could take it. Like I said, personally, I wouldn't give it to a remake, but that's just a personal thing. If you would, that's totally, totally fine. Um, it's just something that makes me kind of twinge a little bit to give it to a remake. But for me... Far and away, the most impressive game this year is Baldur's Gate 3. Also, a big surprise for a lot of people. They started the year not knowing they would be into it, and it's ended up being their favorite game of the year. And I think that counts for something. Whereas, like, Tears of the Kingdom was great. Nobody expected it to <laughs> be anything other than amazing, you know. So, I am going to go Baldur's Gate 3 for game of the year. Best game direction. For me, I would say this is probably up to Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. Tears of the Kingdom is awesome, but it's it's a bigger, badder version of Breath of the Wild. So it feels like, again, most of the groundwork was already there. Mario Brothers Wonder, I've been playing it. Maybe I just am not a, a Nintendo aficionado, so I don't understand and appreciate it as much as I should. But to me, it's like, yeah, it's a good Mario game. Like, whatever. Spider-Man 2... It's not bad, but I mean, like the combat still gets stale. The open world activities are really bland. Even again, like the side activities are better. The side quests are better rather. Um, but other than that, it's it's more Spider-Man that we've seen before. Alan Wake 2 is just an acid trip for like 15, 20 hours or whatever it is. And it's a really good time. But frankly, like Baldur's Gate 3, when you think about the complexity involved with this, getting this game working the volume of content, the branching decisions, like there's so much that goes into Baldur's Gate 3 to make it work. I think I have to give it to Baldur's Gate 3 again. It's just so wildly impressive. Best narrative, 
no shocker. I think I'm giving it to Baldur's Gate 3 because, again, the narrative is just insane. So much nuance, so many layers, so many branching options. But I think you could give it to Phantom Liberty pretty easily. Um, Alan Wake 2, it's mad trippy. So I think either one of these you could make a pretty clear argument for. Spider-Man 2 didn't really make me feel anything. And frankly, it was so painfully predictable that within like an hour of the game starting, I knew exactly what the final encounter would be like. And um, sure enough, it, it was exactly what I, I thought it would be. It's like, oh, there's a particle accelerator in your like charity office. That's weird. I wonder if that's going to be important later. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going Baldur's Gate 3 again. Best art direction. You know what? Oh man, this is tough. This actually is a close one. This one, I'm not sure. I would give it to any one of these three. Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, or Liza P. Hi-Fi Rush, was it just came out of nowhere. Super surprising. It worked really, really good. Alan Wake 2 is just, again, an acid trip. The hybrid between like real-time actual footage and, and, and video of actual actors mixed in with gameplay is really, really cool. But then again, Liza P from a previously kind of unknown studio... You know, I'm going to go Liza P. I'm going to go Liza P because they, I want more games like this. I think they deserve some reward for the incredible work. And coming from a relatively unknown studio, I think that deserves some credit too. Best score and music. This is an actual toss up. This one's really, really tough. I think I'm going to give it to Hi-Fi Rush just because music is the game and it works so freaking well, but literally any one of these could win it. And I would be like, yep. Sounds right. So I wouldn't throw a fit if any of those won. Best audio design. I'm honestly not sure. I'm between Alan Wake 2 and Resident Evil 4 because they both had amazing sound. I think I'm going to go Alan Wake 2 because they also had music balanced in perfectly. That thing, for those of you that played it, you know, like four or five hours in, that crazy thing happens. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's amazing. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, best performance. Ben Starr, Final Fantasy 16, Cameron Monaghan, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Idris Elba, Phantom Liberty, Melanie LeBird from Alan Wake 2, Neil Newborn or Newbin from Baldur's Gate 3, or Yuri Lowenthal, Marvel Spider-Man 2. I actually thought Yuri was very, very stiff in Spider-Man 2. I was actually kind of disappointed at a lot of the the writing. I couldn't really tell if it was Yuri's performance or if it was the writing or maybe both, but I thought it was really, really stiff. Um, I was kind of sick and tired of Peter Parker after like five hours. <laughs> I was already like, oh my God, can you go away? Can I just play as Miles, please? You know, I'm going to give it, I'm going to go Idris. He's so good. He's just so good. He's so hot right now. Hansel, he's so hot. So hot right now. Innovation and accessibility. This one, I honestly have no idea. I have not seen any of these with accessibility options. So I have no idea. I'll, I'll go Street Fighter. I, I honestly have no idea in terms of accessibility options. I haven't dug into them. Games for impact. This is basically code for games that we feel like are important, but that nobody's ever heard of. And sure enough, I think I've heard of this one because it was like the furry cartoon, but I, I haven't heard of any of these, honestly. Um, maybe Chia. I feel like maybe I've heard of that one. I don't, I don't really want to vote for furries, so I'm going to go Chia. <laughs> <laughs> now, Luke, all the furries are going to come after you. Best ongoing game. Honestly, I... On the one hand, you could say like Cyberpunk, it made such an incredible comeback. It does evolve the player experience. But on the other hand, like, let's just be real. Fortnite did the OG thing. They had 44 million players in a single day. Like 44 million players, six years after launch. Like, I feel like that has to count for something. I know it's Fortnite, lol, cringe, but like, Jesus Christ, that's wildly impressive. But you know what? Then again, they are making billions of dollars. So of course they're going to keep doing, you know what? But at least Cyberpunk 2077, they didn't have to keep working on it. And in fact, investors might've been very happy if they just moved on from it. So maybe, you know, 2077 does get credit for sticking with it, even when maybe it didn't make a lot of financial sense and it was just burning money. You know, they actually fixed it and delivered the product pretty close to what they were supposed to originally deliver like three years ago. So I'll go Cyberpunk. 
we'll toss we'll toss that to them best community support this is the funny thing so when this was announced that destiny 2 was nominated for this they literally fired the entire community support staff <laughs> like the whole team was fired which is why it's so freaking funny that you know they they uh <laughs> were nominated for this because it's like but they don't even have that department anymore but okay as for community support i mean i think I'm going to go Baldur's Gate 3 because with early access and all the feedback and tweaks they've made over the years, I think that deserves some some shout outs. What else we got? Best independent game. Like I said, it sounded like Dave the Diver is not actually an indie game. So I'm going to go Dredge. Love me some Dredge. Best debut indie game, Dredge. Best mobile game. There's no WWE champions. What? Phil is going to be livid. Oh no. I'm going to go Heli Kitty uh, Adventure Island. I don't I don't know any of those. But it's Hello Kitty, so I have to. AR VR game. Uh I'm going to go Resi Village. Now we're getting to the easy ones. Best action game. Ooh, baby. Ghost Runner Half-Life Rush Remnant 2. I'm going to go Armored Core. It's very good. Action adventure game. You're gonna call Alan Wake 2 an action adventure? Like it's an action thriller. It's not really an adventure game. I'm gonna give it to Tears of the Kingdom. Like it's adventuring, it's on such another level. Best RPG, Shocker, Starfield. <laughs> Shocker, yeah. <laughs> what, Luke gave it what? Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, that's no surprise there. Best fighting game, probably Street Fighter 6. I've heard th that Street Fighter 6 is probably altogether a better game than the others. Mortal Kombat 1 was kind of built on a lot of gimmicks. Um, best family friendly game. I'm going to go Pikmin 4. Best sim or strategy game. This one's tricky because City Skylines, I love city simulators, but the performance at launch was really, really rough. Company of Heroes started better at least, but Pikmin 4 also. I feel like giving it to these is weird. I'm going to go Pikmin 4 again. Uh, EA Sports FC. Formula 123, Forza Motorsport, Crew Motor Fest. I only played one of these, so I'm going to just vote for the one I played. Sorry, not sorry. Best multiplayer game. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animal, Street Fighter 6, or Super Mario Wonders. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go Baldur's Gate. I actually, we've started with my college friends from back in the day. We've started weekly going through a campaign together and we have one friend that hasn't played like any Baldur's Gate so he's the main character and he makes all the big decisions and it's been a it's been a good time it's been a very good time let's continue on best adaptation Grand Tur did anybody watch Gran Turismo I think did anybody I don't know a single person that went to see this but I don't know maybe it's just me and my bubble Super Mario Bros movie better than I thought it would be honestly Princess Peach at the end of the line. It's so good, dude. I love that movie. But Last of Us, I have to give it to The Last of Us. I was very skeptic boy of The Last of Us, but man, they did a great job with it. And Pedro, ooh, baby. Most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Tekken 8, or Star Wars Outlaws. Um, yeah, this is purely because GTA 6 was not officially announced before this otherwise this wouldn't even be close but i'm gonna go star wars outlaws that's what i'm very much looking forward to content creator of the year people make games i've heard of them and they make good documentaries if they are who i think they are all of these others iron mouse no clue who that is quackity no clue spring no idea uh cypher i have heard of him oh excuse you um, but I've never watched any of his stuff, so I'm gonna go people make games. Best esports game, Counter-Strike 2, Dota 2, League of Legends, PUBG Mobile, or Valorant. Eh, I like Valorant personally, but I don't know. I don't play competitively, so I have no idea. Esports athlete, never heard of anyone. Okay, somebody in chat, put a number between one and six. Anybody, anybody in chat? One and six. Two, number two gets the vote. <laughs> I have no idea otherwise. <laughs> uh, same thing. Best esports team. One and five. Somebody put a number between one and five starting now. Uh, first number I saw was six and then a one. Okay, one. 
I don't watch esports. Can you tell? I have, I have no idea who any of those people are. Esports Coast. Okay, again, between one and five starting now. I have to wait for chat to update. Seven is what I saw. Okay, five. I, I saw five. Okay. Okay, esports events starting now. One and five. I see a five from Leo. Okay. Keep voting. Save card. Is that all of it? That is all of it. You've reached the edge. 404 error. So that is everything. That is everything. Honestly, out of the nominees, I think they generally were pretty good. I, I didn't like disagree with anyone. Were you able to see Finley? No, he's just out of frame. But yeah, this is Finley Kit. So overall, I think the nominations were fine. Um, a couple weird ones here and there, but generally I think they were fine. I, I just think like the biggest, most embarrassing omission is Hogwarts Legacy from every category. You can tell they were like, we just don't want to have to juggle that political hot potato. So we just are not going to touch it. There's honestly some BS. Yeah, it's just, it's like, guys, come on, come on. Like I, I'm down for if you don't want to give it an award or if like, I get that. But to pretend like it just didn't exist when it's literally the biggest game of the year, a brand new uh, release from a new studio, like, what are we doing? The soundtrack, exactly. Like, to not even nominate it for music or best soundtrack is laughable. Or sound design, like, come on. <laughs> Like, nobody's buying that this was a good faith attempt at nominating things in earnest. Like, come on. Come off it. But you know what? We're still losers and we're going to watch the whole thing anyways because we are, I guess, sycophants. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to watch the thing and we're going to we're gonna do the thing. And I don't know if we'll live react to it or what, but we'll we'll be watching it and hanging out. Took my thing.